The Silent Mind, Part 2, Finding Silence, Readings from Sri Aurobindo. Incessant activity is always the difficulty with the mind. It must learn to be silent and let the knowledge come without trying to catch hold of it for its own play. This mechanical putting out of the thoughts happens to everybody at all times, and it is especially strong in the physical mind. One has not to be upset by it, but go on quietly drawing the mind in. For if one does that, the obstacle after a time will diminish, and one can then remain inside with the greater part of the consciousness even if there are some wandering thoughts. So long as there is interest in outward things, this can only be done for short periods. But if there is not any strong interest, then the habit becomes purely mechanical, and it can be got over in a shorter time. Its entire disappearance comes only when there is a complete silence in the being. But even before complete disappearance, one can arrive at a point when, in spite of it, one can go inside at will and remain there. It is not an undesirable thing for the mind to fall silent, to be free from thoughts and still. For it is oftenest when the mind falls silent that there is the full descent of a wide peace from above, and in that wide tranquility the realization of the silent self above the mind spread out in its vastnesses everywhere. Only when there is the peace and the mental silence, the vital mind tries to rush in and occupy the place or else the mechanical mind tries to raise up for the same purpose its round of trivial, habitual thoughts. What the sadhaka has to do is to be careful to reject and hush these outsiders, so that during the meditation at least, the peace and quietude of the mind and vital may be complete. This can be done best if you keep a strong and silent will. That will is the will of the Purusha behind the mind. When the mind is at peace, when it is silent, one can become aware of the Purusha, silent also, separate from the action of the nature. To be calm, steady, Fixed in the spirit, this quietude of the mind, this separation of the inner purusha from the outer prakriti is very helpful, almost indispensable. So long as the being is subject to the whirl of thoughts or the turmoil of the vital movements, one cannot be thus calm and fixed in the spirit. To detach oneself to stand back from them, to feel them separate from oneself, is indispensable. For the discovery of the true individuality and the building up of it in the nature, two things are necessary. First, to be conscious of one's psychic being behind the heart, and next, the separation of the Purusha from the Prakriti. For the true individual is behind, veiled by the activities of the outer nature. It is quite natural that the unsteadiness of the physical mind should interfere with the settling of the full and constant quietude and faith. It always does with everybody, 
But that does not mean that this quietude and faith will not or cannot settle in the nature. You should try to get a constant will for that quietude, so that when the restlessness or unsteadiness come across, your will to quiet might meet it or soon reappear and dispel the disturbance. That would make the elimination of the restlessness or impatience easier. But, in any case, the mother's force is there, working behind the variations of the surface consciousness, and it will bring you through them. Silence is always good. But I do not mean by quietness of mind entire silence. I mean a mind free from disturbance and trouble, steady, light, and glad, so as to be open to the force that will change the nature. The important thing is to get rid of the habit of the invasion of troubling thoughts, wrong feelings, confusion of ideas, unhappy movements. These disturb the nature and cloud it and make it more difficult for the force to work. When the mind is quiet and at peace, the force can work more easily. It should be possible to see things that have to be changed in you without being upset or depressed. The change is then the more easily done. It is not so much getting rid of mental activity as converting it into the right thing. It is then a mind that has gone inside and sees things from there, an intuitive mind. What has to be surpassed and changed is the intellectual reason which sees things from outside only by analysis and inference, when it does not do it rather by taking a hasty look and saying, so it is, or so it is not. But you can't get the inner or upper mind unless the old mental activity becomes a little quiet. A quiet mind does not involve itself in its thoughts or get run away with by them. It stands back, detaches itself, lets them pass, without identifying itself, without making them its own. It becomes the witness mind, watching the thoughts when necessary, but able to turn away from them and receive from within and from above. Silence is good, but absolute silence is not indispensable, at least at earlier stages. I do not know that to wrestle with the mind to make it quiet is of much use. Usually the mind gets the better of that game. It is this standing back, detaching oneself, getting the power to listen to something other than the thoughts of the external mind that is the easier way. At the same time, one can look up, as it were, imaging to oneself the force as there just above and calling it down or quietly expecting its help. That is how most people do it, till the mind falls gradually quiet or silent of itself, or else silence begins to descend from above. But it is important not to allow the depression or despair to come in, because there is no immediate success. That can only make things difficult and stop any progress that is preparing. The activity of mind is necessary, so long as a higher activity cannot be reached. But if the spiritual consciousness becomes active with its direct power of perception, the mind must become more and more content and give place to spiritual perception, psychic intimations, 
and discrimination, intuitions, a deeper knowledge from within, a higher knowledge from above. It is in the silence of the mind that the strongest and freest action can come. When the mind is active, it interferes with the inspiration, puts in its own small ideas which get mixed up with the inspiration, or starts something from a lower level, or simply stops the inspiration altogether by bubbling up with all sorts of mere mental suggestions. So also intuitions, or action, etc., can come more easily when the ordinary, inferior movement of the mind is not there. It is also in the silence of the mind that it is easiest for knowledge to come from within or above, from the psychic or from the higher consciousness. It is in the inner silence of the mind that true knowledge can come. For the ordinary activity of the mind only creates surface ideas and representations which are not true knowledge. Speech is usually only the expression of the superficial nature. Therefore, to throw oneself out too much in such speech wastes the energy and prevents the inward listening which brings the word of true knowledge. In the silence will come the true dynamic thought formations which can effectuate or realize themselves. Thought can be a force which realizes itself, but the ordinary surface thinking is not of that kind. There is in it more waste of energy than anything else. It is in the thought that comes in a quiet or silent mind that there is power not only a truer knowledge, but a greater power comes to one in the quietude and silence of a mind that instead of bubbling on the surface can go into its own depths and listen for what comes from a higher consciousness. When the personal mind is still, whatever mental action is needed is taken up and done by the force itself which does all the necessary thinking and progressively transforms it by bringing down into it a higher and higher plane of perception and knowledge. There is always a difficulty in keeping the physical mind within or silent because it has been its nature to occupy itself with outward things and it finds a difficulty in accustoming itself to a contrary movement. You must not be depressed by that, but persist in the aspiration and will till it is done.